Hello everybody, my name is Mika from dmcx.com and in this video I'm going to talk about the bicycle size and specification of George Bennett, the New Zealand Pro Rider. But before I go along with my video, I just want to warn you, please treat this video as, as a chat, like do all the men, like well-educated men at the cafe just talking about bicycle. Right. So there is no footage of the bicycle, no footage of the rider riding his bike, and not even picture of the frame. I just uh, just want to make sure that you don't waste your time with, uh, and be disappointed with the video. It is just technical talk. I will show just a, a sketch of the bike, geometry and the fitting, but that's it. So thank you to, to, for watching and let me keep going with the video content. George Bennett is one of the best riders from New Zealand. He's an excellent climber. Mind you, there are so many mountains in New Zealand, so he got a very good background for training. So as I said, he's an excellent climber. He's racing for the season 2020 and beyond with the team Jum Jumbo Visma, which is a New uh, Netherlands team. And uh, that team is actually an excellent team, right? So George is 1 meter 80 tall and he's weighting his optimal optimal weight performance weight is 58 kilograms now let me put this in perspective it means you look at me i'm not really big guy right i am 1 meter 76 which means he's four centimeters taller than me and he's nine kilograms lighter than me so how is this possible right it's like <laughs> How can you get skinnier than than me? Well, it's nine kilograms. It's like it's basically it it is the weight of your road bike loaded with two full bottles on it. Wow! And he's that equivalent lighter than me. So obviously this is um, an advantage for climbing, right? So this is to to say that he's very tall. I mean he's tall for European uh, stand up. Uh, so 1 meter 80, 58 kilograms, it means he's very lightweight and he's uh, looking at his bike setup, he's also very flexible, very soft body. Um, he, you, you, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. He's racing on a size 53 centimeters, Bianchi Ortre XR4 rim brakes. So size 53 is a kind of small for, for a guy tall, uh, 1 meter 80 tall, but as you know now, if you follow my videos, if you, or if you read my blog, it's like basically most of pro riders are riding on a one or even sometimes two size smaller than what the manufacturer is recommending for normal people like you and me. And the reason, the main reason, is because they they want to have a lower cockpit. So with with a smaller frame size, uh, the head tube is shorter, compared to a, a size design for casual riders. I'm, I mean casual, like as long as you are not pro for me, I, I will I will say casual riders, even if you're doing racing. So that means the frame size 53 centimeters has a head tube of 125 millimeters height and the top tube is 535 millimeters. The seat tube, the virtual, which means from the measure from the center of the bottom bracket to the top tube horizontal line, but this is a virtual horizontal line because the frame these days are, most of frames are sloping, going down as it go backwards. So, so the virtual horizontal line meeting with the seat tube horizontal uh, virtual top it's 53 centimeters the the real size of the seat tubes of of the frame if you if you measure it is uh, 480 millimeters so that's that's uh, where it's meeting with the top tube that's much shorter however bianchi does categorize this frame as a 53 centimeters which is kind of uh, small for one, 180 millimeters, 180 centimeters tall rider. The bottom bracket drop is 68 millimeters and the chain stay is 406. I was going to say it's five, but anyway, 406 millimeters chain stay length. So looking at the frame design, it is what 
used to be a classic type of design. It's, it's not like a big drop, BB drop. Nowadays, like uh, most of American brands have are in, in the ballpark of 70, 72, 74 millimeters drop for, for a frame of this size. So as you see, it is not optimized for aerodynamics. It, it, it is kind of classic. And the chain stay being short, it's also making a very stiff frame. And, and actually, it is not a hidden fact. The Bianchi Ultra XR4 is very stiff frame because it does everything. It, the, the team, John Bo Visma, use it for everything, basically, for the, for the mountain stage, for the, so for the flat, for the classics, the spring classics, the autumn classics. The, the frame does everything. And it is actually kind of heavy compared than what you get from another uh, dedicated lightweight frame. The, Bian the Bianchi Ultra XR4 on the size 55 is 1.1 kilogram or 1,100 grams, which is kind of heavy for, for a, a competition road frame. But, you know, they can win the zero with this frame, so should be fine. So now coming back to the, f to the specific setup of George Bennett, George is using a 120 millimeters stem long, and that's a FSA stem. And the particularity here is it is a minus 17 degrees. The angle is very, very steep down. So if you look at the Bianchi, uh, at the Jumbo Visma bikes, when you see uh, one of the bike with a very steep down, downward stem, it means this is George Bennett's bike. And so the difference height between the the handlebar grip and the saddle, the top of the saddle, is a staggering 140 millimeters or 14 centimeters. That's a huge difference of height. That's a huge. But keep in keep in mind, George is very tall, so it means he, there is more to flex than a short rider. So. But however, this is huge. This is huge. Like 14 centimeters different of drop. It is huge for 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 a bike like this for a climber. But he's still young, right? So flexible guy. So now talking of uh, just before I leave the cockpit, the handlebar width is. Let me check because I, I'm, I'm bad with the number. I think it's 400 millimeters handlebar uh, width. Yes, it is a um, FSA K Force handlebar. It is a 400 millimeters width. So it, it means the stem and the handlebar are two different parts. Because why I'm seeing this is because the team is also sponsored by Vision and some of the riders are racing with one piece stem and bar setup. But because George needs a very steep angle for, the, for his setup, so he is taking a separate stem and handlebar. That's the, the, the um, that's the roundup for the cockpit. Now I'm going to the saddle. The saddle height measure from the center of the bottom bracket to the top of the saddle for George is an exactly 745 millimeters. As we know, it is a drop of 68 millimeters. The crank length, uh, sorry, a BB drop is 68 millimeters and the crank lengths are 172.5 millimeters. Now, George, as I said in the beginning, is one of the best climbers from New Zealand and an excellent, if not one of the best, I'm not saying he's the best, he's one of the best among the team as a climber. But he's not a team leader. So it is strategic here. He, he might be, or he is actually dedicated as a team support, a rider, uh, his support, a team leader, which is happening to be Primoz Roglic, and Primoz Roglic is racing on almost the same bike size. He's raci Primoz is on the 53 centimeters, and they are they are close in 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 sizing. Uh, I mean, in in the height. So it means that when they are racing, George is actu actually giving support to to Primoz up to the latest part of the stage. Uh, I mean, the climbing part. Should anything happen? like a crash or a mechanical failure, they can swap the bike. So George can actually help in the climb to lead the leader as long uh, as late as possible. 
and should anything happen, need a, to swap a bike, if the car, the support car is not close by, you can swap a bike, and Primus is not handicapped, he's not handicapped with the different bike, because it's pretty much the same size, except for the stem drop, but the saddle height is the same, pretty much for like few millimeters, three, I think it's three millimeters different. So that's the story. Stra strategic, this is strategic to, to pretty much every team. So you, if you look at carefully, very carefully at who is racing on, on, let's say on a grand tour, which team selection is, you look at the rider size and, and the profile and, and they always try to make close, uh, the very um, support riders which are close in size and, and, and um, characteristic. Right, now, uh, the bike setup. The bike is equipped fully on Shimano, so it, it is a Shimano Dura SDI2, 11 speed, so it, it means it is electric shifting, electronic shifting, the, um, but the bike is on rim brakes, and as I always explain in my videos, the team chasing the Grand Tours general classification, like to win the Grand Tours, are actually all, 99%, are on rim brakes, and that's because it's more reliable, and if you don't have the support car nearby, it's much faster to change a flat, uh, a, a wheel, right? You, you just open the quick release, which happened to be invented by Campagnolo, by the way, than to unscrew the through axle. It's not big difference in time, but on a grand tour of shame, you, you know that every second counts, so marginal gain is very important. So that's why the pro racing to win the Grand Tour are on rim brakes. There is only one team which actually this year is racing on disc brake, where the, the potential winner of a Grand Tour is actually on, rim, on disc brake, but this is for another video. So that's, a, that's, that's the reason for the rim brakes, actually. So you look at the, the, the teams out there, you, you see the one racing on rim brakes, they are looking for a, a Grand Tour win. Back to the bike setup, uh, everything is Shimano, the wheels are from Shimano, they are uh, the tubular types of wheels, so the rim brake of course depends on the stage profile, uh, the team is racing with Vito Vittoria tubulars, the, most of the time it's a Vittoria Corsa tubular with a section of 26 millimeters, now everything is just like basic, I mean not basic, it is Shimano uh, that you can get from a normal store as a body, so there is no exotic setup, except for one, which is hidden. It is a lubricant on the chain. It is provided by Absolute Black. It is a very small company, it is very interesting, and they are doing what is called a graphene lube, which is claiming that it does save 3 to 10 watts output. Uh, so this is, if you believe it, it's good, if you don't believe it, it's fine, but be aware there are two professional teams out there racing officially with it and some other teams which are non-officially racing with it. So this is very interesting. So you can check on my blog, uh, I, I got the link directly to that uh, graphene loop. It is very interesting. It is not expensive on small uh, size, but anyway, just check it out. It's very interesting. Uh, 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 yeah, anyway. Right, I think I've been every through everything. Maybe one thing is uh, George is racing on saddle from Physic. It is a Physic Iron Carbon Race. That's it. I think I've been through everything. If you have any question related to this video, please post me a comment and I will make sure to reply accurately as I can. If there are any mistakes, just let me know and I will make sure to correct it for the next time. Right, see you to the next video. Bye bye.